I'm Scott Al Miller, and this is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. I got a question today, and the timing could not have been more perfect about what do we do about insect and critter control here in the Leon area. Of course, we live with our doors open, our windows open. We just had a video about that not too long ago, and that prompts the question. We don't put screens on our doors, we don't, or on our windows. We, we never put them on the doors. We don't close the doors, so it's really easy for anything to just walk into the house, cats included, and that we just let happen. But what do we do about everything else? Do we have a, in a, a, a pest control service or anything like that? What do we do? We're gonna talk about that right after that bump. Today's video goes perfectly with our discussions about keeping the house cool that we had recently and about taking our dogs to the vet and getting them some uh, treatments because it's very important to protect your dogs against worms and ticks and other things like that. Parasites here in Nicaragua, you have a lot more parasitical danger for pets here than you do in North America. So that's something you need to be super aware of if you're going to be keeping a pet here, rescuing a pet here, bringing a pet here from abroad. You need to have protections in place, not just on your pet, but in your yard and around your house, you need to be stopping ticks and other dangers for your pets before they bite them, not just killing them afterwards. If you use something like NexGuard, which is totally great, that's going to do things like kill a tick that bites your dog, and that will, of course, reduce the danger of ticks, but that doesn't actually stop the tick from biting your dog in the first place. So it's certainly going to do a lot to reduce transmission, but it is not going to stop an infected tick from potentially infecting your dog. So you don't want that to happen. How do you do that. That you do by treating your yard and the spaces around your house and obviously the spaces inside your house as well. So for us, this just happened to work out that this very morning that I'm doing this recording, Truly Nolan, our pest control service came and treated our house and yard. So it was a great day to talk about it. I did want to film it, but I was not ready when they showed up because of course they don't give you an exact time and I wasn't completely ready. So that I just wasn't able to show it, but it's a pest control service. It's basically just like you would get in the United States. I assume most of you have used pest control in other countries. When I lived in Texas, we had pest control. It was basically identical, right? We had a guy that we knew he would come in a truck. Now here, Truly Nolan is like, as far as I know, the largest of the pest control services, and they've been fantastic. We're very happy with them. I'm not saying other people wouldn't be great. Feel free to experiment, but this is a big company that has been doing a really good job for us for quite some time now. They come in a marked truck. It's super obvious that it's them, very professional. They've got uniforms on, which doesn't really matter, but it does give you a bit of confidence, but it gives you that feeling of an American pest control type service. They came out and they first, they do a fogging of the yard. So they go through the whole yard and, and it's a very heavy thing designed to kill mosquitoes and ticks and all that kind of stuff out in the yard. Then they do the wall treatments where they go around and, and put down a poison along the walls and we definitely notice this because if we are to encounter, for example, and I was asked about this, if we're to encounter a cockroach, which we do about maybe once a month, we'll encounter a cockroach or a little bit less, which is nothing like what it was like in Texas, where it was more like every two to three days. And that was our house in Dallas. If we were down to Houston, they're just constant, right? They're everywhere here. Even with things wide open, they're rare. I bet it's not even once a month. I know in restaurants, I've seen maybe two or three in all the years that we've lived here in the house. They're still quite a rarity, but I did see one just a few weeks ago. But when we do see them, they're generally in their death throes because they're becoming uh, uh, mortally wounded by whatever stuff is being put down. So by the time we see them, they're really not doing too well. And so that's been really important. Termite treatments are important. Ant treatments are important. Uh, we have a bird bath that is falling down because ants have eaten underneath of it. The ants themselves are not such a problem, but their colony causes things to collapse. So you need to watch out for that, but most importantly, taking care of your pets. Uh, so then also in the house, and this is a standard thing, though this is very different than the United States, uh, here they fumigate for insects. So you have to get all of your pets and get them out of the house. For us, that's our two dogs. We just make them sit in the chairs with us outside. We put our cat in a backpack and we all sit outside and they smoke the house. They cover it with so much smoke. And I actually was on video when this happened to us with us in the house by accident in Granada nine years ago. And my wife 
almost broke her leg crashing into stuff because you will lose sight inside the house. It becomes so dark, even in the middle of the day with those windows open and the sun out, it will become so dense with smoke that you can't breathe and you can't see. So if you don't know where your doors are or can't figure out how to get them open, you can become trapped. So you gotta be, so don't let them smoke with you inside the house. But so they do that here. You close up all the windows, you close up all the doors and they just completely fill the house with fumigation smoke. And in doing so, that really, really kills anything in the house, anything that's hiding in the rafters, hiding in the nooks and crannies, this really gets pervasive. And so it's very effective for, for deep uh, elimination of things inside the house. So between that and the yard and then the permanent stuff done around uh, the, the base of the walls, it's a very effective program. And it really makes it that we're able to leave the house open all the time and it doesn't cause any problems. So with these treatments, we really do have extremely few bugs. Now, of course, where you are, what you're doing, bugs vary dramatically from place to place. And people are always asking us about how we interact with them and how bad it is. Now, we do tend to use off. I use very little, but Paul and my wife are using it all the time. They find that the mosquitoes are pretty bad. I find that I don't even notice them most of the time. It depends on a lot of factors. Typically, mosquitoes like me more than most people, but here I find that they kind of don't. It actually is kind of good for me. But in general, like the, the number of insects we have to interact with and have problems with is extremely low. The one thing that is much higher than you would normally think is we have so many moths and that's uh, nearly every night. Now, again, remember the house has lights on and everything is wide open, not screens. So moths, big ones, because we have moths that are this big here, will just fly into the house and they'll hang out. And, and then when we turn off the lights, they're like, oh, we're in our cave and they'll just stay. So there's almost always moths in the house. My kids do not enjoy that. So that's not a positive, but it's not a big deal, right? Moths are not a scary thing. Moths don't do damage to your clothes. Their larva does, but the moths do not. That is a myth. Um, uh, they, you know, they can't bite you. They don't have teeth. They have, they're not poisonous. So they're annoying, right? People don't like them flying around, but they're not something to be worried about. That's the one thing that we get in the house all the time. Every once in a great while. Cockroaches do exist. We've seen them. Uh, I have had a handful of crickets. I've had a couple katydids. And remember, we've been here for years. So we're talking just a few things over years. Spiders, of course, you get because there's little tiny gnats and stuff. I actually like having the spiders. They're mostly like daddy long legs and things like that because they eat um, the gnats and they attract. So that that's good. Um, as long as they're in the corners, like they don't bother anybody. But in general, we have almost nothing in the house. The occasional beetle likes to come in and die in the floor. Um, but it's, uh, it's extremely low to the point where I would never worry about having screens on the windows, even for sleeping. It just, it just doesn't matter for me. Some people are just very averse to insects and you may want to have a house you can close up and put on screens. That's going to be a lot more costly, a lot more complex, but those options exist if that's something that's important for you. But I would, unless you have a severe reaction to insects, and, and mostly I mean an emotional reaction to insects that you're afraid of them, which my youngest, or my, I'm sorry, my oldest daughter is, she's absolutely terrified of moths, unfortunately is one of the things, um, unless you have this really great fear of them, then I would say give a try to Nicaragua without screens and try the outside life because I think you'll probably find that the level of insects is so low compared to what you're used to that you'll be like, oh, yeah, there's some, but there's so few that like, why would I worry about it? Why would I make my life more complicated to try to avoid it? I wouldn't. It's just not that big of a deal. So I give it a try. It depends. You know, are you in the city? Are you in the country? Are you in which city, which region? Every little thing will vary a ton. And sometimes just one side of the street or the other makes all the difference. So individual houses will matter. But yes, to answer the question, we do use an exterminator service and they're great. And that has proven to be significant enough that our dogs are incredibly healthy. We have not had to worry about ticks or anything, knock on wood, no worms, nothing like that uh, from here. And, uh, and we mostly attribute that to that. We just never see them with anything. We don't have to worry about fleas in the yard or anything like that, uh, which has, which has been great. Now we obviously have a, a bit of space of our own. So our dogs are not interacting with outside dogs on a regular basis, but Betty does come over and she interacts with other dogs. So that does happen. And that's something we have to be a little bit careful about. Uh, that's where your, your primary dangers are going to come from interacting with other dogs. So if you have dogs, you can keep at home, you're going to be in that much better shape. 
We're getting darker here. The sun is going down. I actually have a beautiful sunset going on, but from the house, we don't really see the sunset. We just kind of see the colors in the sky and the palm trees turning kind of a golden, uh, almost a, a salmon coral color tonight. It's, it's pretty gorgeous. We have a lot of cloud cover. So uh, insects are a thing and everyone has a different uh, experience with them, both in where you're coming from and where you're coming to. But for us, the main concern is with the animals and keeping our kids from freaking out. Now, a lot of people here do sleep with mosquito nets. That's very common because there are some amount of mosquitoes. And because we don't put screens on the windows, you do get a lot more mosquitoes in the house as a ratio of what's outside of the house. When I'm outside of the house here, it is nothing even close to what life was like in New York or Texas growing up. Those areas had so many more mosquitoes, so many bugs in general than here that we obviously had screens all the time and always were killing things in the house and always had to like race in the doors and stuff before things got in. Here, no, no screens and what's inside the house is very similar, maybe a little bit more because we're wide open and we're open at night, right? Because yeah, we close our doors at night, but our windows, which have bars, we talked about that in, in a couple of episodes recently, including the safety one, but insects, they're just gonna come and go. Birds will fly through the house. Bats will come and go. Cats will come and go even when the house is shut up. So there's definitely going to be mosquitoes in the house. If there's a mosquito outside, they will come into the house. Uh, so our house has a few, but I'll sit out in the salon in the middle of the evening and watch TV and not have to worry about bugs at all. I'm not using off or anything like that. It really doesn't bother me. My daughter, because she is terrified of insects, only the one, she sleeps in a mosquito net because she can't handle even a single daddy long legs being in her bedroom, let alone a mosquito or anything like that. So, uh, and her biggest fear is a moth. Um, so she takes it to an extreme because of her, her fear. Um, but that is, that's an extreme thing, but those are things you can do. And a lot of people do sleep in mosquito nets because they have wide open rooms where their individual bedrooms are completely open during the night. Um, and maybe they'll have fans running or whatever and use a mosquito net to, to give themselves some protection against mosquitoes while basically being outside, which is uh, which is off a very common thing to do here. But people also sleep outside in hammocks. They're only able to do that because there aren't that many mosquitoes or insects that it's completely common. Even out on the beach, people will literally sleep in hammocks on the patio of the hotels because they like the fresh air. They like the sound of the ocean. And it's just a thing they like to do. So you'll find that all over the country. People like sleeping outdoors here. That works because of the low insect count. So not a thing to be super concerned about, but especially if you're gonna have pets, yes, pest control. If we didn't use pest control, sure, we would have more things in the house, but it would barely affect the mosquitoes. Those come from really far away, so you're not controlling for those. Uh, the major pest, it would just be a few more of everything. It is the ticks in the ground that affect the dogs. That is the primary reason that we have concerns. Without that, we would basically just ignore it. But you can definitely get a service like that, whether you have pets or not, not expensive at all down here. But if you have pets, I definitely implore you to take very careful uh, action to make sure that they're not being exposed to ticks and things because it is super dangerous and you will shorten their lifespans and you'll have expensive treatments that are very unpleasant for them. Just keep them healthy in the first place and it'll be that much easier all along and you'll have more time with your best friends. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And as always, I will see all of you tomorrow.